Thank you, Senator King. Senator Blackburn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Ruby, I want to come to you. NS NNSA announced uh, that it cancels solicitation for the management and operations at Y-12 and Pantex, and then they're looking at separate management contracts, and they're going to handle these separately after they have a new m &O established, and then they're going to take the existing contractor and make them the overseer. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? And really sounds like quite a mess, doesn't it? And so I agree. I know you've heard today from others about the instability of the contracting processes for NNSA. And uh, I think that we deserve better. Our nation deserves better, and they deserve more consistency. And uh, Tennesseans that are working up there want to know how this is going to affect their mission day in and day out and what their expectation is. They deserve some dependable, competent leadership. So what is the timeline for awarding that for Y-12? What are you looking at? Thank you, Senator Blackburn. Let me just say that I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, while this sounds complicated, uh, the intention is to get long-term stability and reward our MNO contractor workforce, okay. which does the work of NNSA. Okay, Make then, no doubt about it. That's all right, the people then we What are the local management implications of what you're doing, the path you're going? Yeah, we, the, uh, we will, uh, right now, uh, Pantex and Y-12 share a field office. I, I know what the setup is. I'm asking about the long-term implications. What are those? What are the cost implications? Yep. Okay. Are you doing this and pushing back on infrastructure? Because that's imperative, as you know, and there is a backlog that we're waiting to have addressed. Yeah. We, this is in order to get dedicated leadership at Y-12 and at Pantex because of the tremendous workload that we're asking of those facilities, separate dedicated leadership. It may cost a little bit more, but it is worth it because we have to uh, make and sure timeline? that we can deliver. Timeline? We expect that the first RFP will be out this year. Uh, that will then need, we'll, we'll have that awarded in, in two years, and we will then one year later. Uh, so so this, we're three years away from seeing consistency is what you're telling me. We are, but let okay, me, let me thought, move. Let me thought, move on. You know that that is unacceptable, and you know that that is not fair to the Y-12 employees, but uh, let's continue to discuss that and to work on that issue. Um, uh, Secretary Granholm, uh, Senator Tuberville mentioned uranium processing. And, of course, the processing facility in Tennessee is one of our largest construction projects. And, you know, it gets held up time and again with budget by indecision. And it, the UPF was to come in at, in 2025 at $6.5 that is no longer what is as estimated, and the expectation is that it will come online in August 2026. Is that when you expect to deliver UPF? Yes. Administrator, are you wanting to answer that? Yeah, let me jump in. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, that's our plan, and, and we are looking uh, closely right now, independently, uh, ex independent experts at any cost uh, implications. I just want to say for a $6.5 billion project executed over eight years during COVID and during all the supply chain issues we have, we feel this project okay. has been incredibly successful. Well, you mentioned yesterday, you told one of my colleagues that an eight-month delay was a commendable accomplishment, and I really disagree with that comment. But we're going to continue to work on it. Madam Secretary, I want to come back to you on the issue of transportation fuel, because that is a top topic. 
And with the estimate being $6 a gallon during January, we get asked about this every single day, every single day. So what are you doing every day to increase production? Because you're eliminating leases, you're eliminating drilling on federal land. Uh, Senator Hawley went through the litany of steps that you all have taken. And we hear from people in the oil industry about the adverse impact of your actions. So tell me what you're doing every day to increase U.S. oil production so that we return to being energy independent and energy dominant like we were the day that you went in as secretary. Yeah, we agree that we want to increase supply. It's why, for example, in the first year of the Biden administration, more permits uh, have been issued than but in the first But you don't give three. the drilling permits. No, we are giving those permits. Um, we want to, and we have called How many people are increase. working on them? Is it one? No, it's actually across the government. It's over at the Department of Interior. It's not in my, in my okay. lane. But I do right. know that we have been increasing permitting because we want to see increased production in the United States and abroad to be able to make up for the lost barrels that have been <coughs> off the market as a result of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Ma'am, I would encourage you to stop saying, uh, saying that. We're importing 670,000 barrels of oil per day. The cost of a gallon of gas, the cost of fertilizer, the cost of diesel are at all time highs. We need your best effort. We are working and, on this well, every day to the extent we can, given that it is a global market and oil is, is. traded Thank you, on Mr. a global Chairman. market. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm over time. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Blackburn. Senator